Welcome, Welcome to church. church! Good morning, everybody. Yes. If you are joining us online this morning, Welcome to World Harvest Church. Yes. We have amazing news for you. You have tuned in to the perfect place at the most perfect right. time because God has something for you today. Good morning. My name is Leanne Nolasco. I am a sophomore here at Valor Christian College, the School of Revival, and I am a music ministry student here today from Toronto, Canada. Amen. My name is Robert Thomas. I am a fourth year, a senior bachelor student yes. at the School of the Spirit, the School of Revival, and I'm just happy to be here this Sunday, yes. listen, because it's the house of the Lord. Yes. It doesn't matter where you were this week, what you did right. this week, what happened to you this week, you're in the right place this morning yes. in the house of the Lord, and I'm glad, and I know that God is glad that right. you're here with us this morning. So what should they do, Leanne? Yes, and listen, if you are tuning in online, we want you to stay liking, stay yes. commenting, stay engaged yes. the entire time, and click that share button on your screen because right. listen there are souls attached to just one click right. share this with your friend your mom your dad and listen pastor has had a burden this past season and it's passed on to us so go on and click share and send it to your nephews right. your nieces anyone part of this next generation yes. kids youth they need the move absolutely. of God in their lives right now. Yes, oh my gosh, absolutely. Share it yes. with everyone you know and make sure you're in the comments section letting us know that you're here, that you're alive, yes. and also let us know where you're watching from. Yes. Listen, she's from Canada, I'm from Bermuda. We This is World Harvest International, Church. Huh? It's all <laughs> over the world. So make sure you let us know all the wonderful places that you're watching from and from all over the world. We actually have people watching right now yes. from Zambia. We have people from Argentina. We have people yes. from Canada. Yes. Listen, welcome everyone to the house of the Lord. Keep letting us know where you're watching from. And also, what are you believing for? Yes. This is not just a place where you come and watch service, but you participate. You get to get your miracle yes. watching there online. So don't be left out and feel like because you're watching on a screen, you're not a part of it. God wants to meet you just yes. as much as he wants to meet us here in this tabernacle. So go ahead and let us know what you're believing for. For so we can pray with you. Yes. And while you're at it, subscribe to our subscribe. channel. Click that bell so that way yes. you can get notified every single time that the power of God is moving here right. at World Harvest. And let me give you a secret. It's always moving here at World All Harvest. All the time. <laughs> so make sure you subscribe and you're plugged into what God is doing here. Yes, and listen, as he said, we have people tuning in from all over the world, and we have Paul from Toronto, Canada, believing for salvation for his friends, and so we're just gonna pray for him. God, I thank you, Lord, yes. that your hand is never too short to save, Father. Thank I thank you, Lord God, that if you did it for me, that if you did it for Robert, Hallelujah. that you can do it for anybody, Lord yes. God. And so we are believing and we declare salvation over Paul's friends, Lord, right now. I thank you, Lord, that your word says to believe and you and your household mm -hmm. shall be saved in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Keep those prayer requests coming in. We have Sam praying for strength. Yes. So we just declare strength to you, Sam. Strength to everyone watching right yes, now God. in the name of Jesus. Yes. We believe that it's our portion. Yes. And like our pastor said, we control our domain. So we declare right. strength is in your domain. Yes. Joy is in your domain. Peace and yes. favor and the power of God is in your domain and nothing else can enter this morning. Listen, yes. I don't know if you guys feel excited, Woo! but I'm a little bit excited because right. we're going to encounter God today. Amen. Yes. But we also want you to encounter God this week right. with a free digital download. All you need to do is leave your email in the comments and get this amazing digital download. It is the gospel according to princesses and superheroes. Yes. And you'll be hearing from none other than Mrs. Joni Parsley. Woo! Listen, she is a powerful powerhouse and you want to make sure that you get this amazing amazing message from our first lady yes and as you know we are proud valor christian college students yes, we are. and this week we have move in madness yes. Woo! and we are so excited to welcome all our new world changers but listen it is not too late to get signed up for right. this year's 
fall semester. It right. is not too late. God can move on your behalf in just a matter of days. So go ahead to valorcollege.edu. We have so many different scholarship yes, opportunities. And give us a call. Get connected with us. Student ambassadors are ready to welcome you as a world changer because we know that God can do and will do mighty things if you just be obedient to the voice of God and get signed up right. for Valor College right now. Yes, get signed up. We yes. can't wait for you to join us and be here for Move in Madness for the semester. If you can't join in person, join online. We can't okay. wait to have you. But something we cannot also wait for is for God to move yes. in today's service. Get yourself stirred. Get yourselves ready. Create an atmosphere because right. God's about to meet you in 90, 90 seconds. seconds. One of our campuses, everyone joining us online and social media. Listen, we're kicking it off with baptisms this Sunday morning and baptism of so many adults but also children into newness of life because our kiddos and high school students are in revival and they're getting baptized this Sunday morning too. So listen, as they're getting baptized, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Here we go. You are God and you're in control. Seated high, you are Lord.
it up, lift it up. as the mention of your name, Jesus. So grateful that you inhabit the praises of your people. Not perfect people, but blood-bought, forgiven people. We thank you, God, for the privilege to access your presence in heavenly places today, God. Yeah. Yeah, God.
the adversary and say, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Because when they start praising, God starts inhabiting. When they start saying hallelujah, heaven comes to rest and dwell in those praises. So even the adversary hears the sound of your God and heaven coming to fight for you. A sound calls the enemy to scatter. A sound can cause the enemy to be defeated. As you release the sound of praise this Sunday morning, lift it up, 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 lift it up. Lift up that hallelujah. Lift up that bless the Lord. Lift up that God's been faithful. Lift up that expectation. Lift up that God's gonna come through for me. Lift it up that God has never failed and it never will. Lift up, lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Chains falling. I hear the chains falling. What, 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 what? Sing it out, say. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. Cause there is power. There is power. Say.
confess. Every knee will bow. Oh! Yeah! It's breaking, it's breaking. Jesus, the 
anointed one. Jesus, the Holy One. Jesus, that name that I call on. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. Jesus, that name where the righteous run in and they are saved. Woo! Come on, y'all. Hey! Hallelujah. so sorry. Hallelujah. 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 I said I would come down this morning Hallelujah. that a man said to me, hey, but I walked in and when I walked through the doors, on, I heard a sound of freedom hey. and I'm not letting any other sound within come my on. domain. I hear the sound and it's the sound of freedom. So death, where is your sting? Hey. Oh, grave, where is your victory? Do you hear a sound? Hey. Hallelujah. 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 I hear a sound this morning. My great God, I got to go to the announcements. Uh, before we go to the announcements, uh, our elder, Pastor Jimmy, is going to win souls at Cleveland in one of the prisons this morning. So Come let's on. give it up for that. So we're just going to pray. And we're going to declare the word of the Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That as he walks in the prison doors. That it would be like Paul and Silas. Yeah. That there would be a shaking. Yeah. And there would be a shaking of the foundation. Yeah. And that there would be freedom release. Yeah. That there would be the presence of the Lord release. Yeah. So let's stretch our hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we bless you for your presence, and we thank you, Lord, uh, that you would cover and anoint uh, Pastor Jimmy and every single person traveling with him today. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, your word declares uh, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, uh, there is freedom. Uh, so we decree and we declare uh, the power of the Spirit of God uh, to bring liberty, uh, liberty to the prison, uh, liberty for the depression, yeah. liberty from guilt, liberty from shame. Come we on. declare in Jesus' name the five-fold anointing on, beyond Pastor Jesus. Jimmy. Now in Jesus' name, greater deliverance. We declare souls coming on to the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray now like Jabez, lengthen his cords and strengthen his stakes in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone amen. say amen. 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 Someone say amen. 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 So very quickly, I'm going to testify about the sound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So on Wednesday night, hallelujah, I'm going to try to keep it together. Hallelujah. On Wednesday night, huh, let me tell you something. The prayers of the righteous, Come hallelujah. Yep, 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 oh, yep. Jesus, uh, they availeth much, hallelujah. Right. And from the moment I came to Bala Christian College, uh, I put on my altar, hallelujah, uh, that my brother shall be saved. That's oh, right. hey. Jesus, help me. Oh, so Wednesday night, uh, pastor said to us, he said, get out your phones. And I kind of messed it up at the beginning, and I didn't get my phone, but I got my phone after. And pastor, listen what happened when I got my phone. Pastor, you said to text someone, and you said text them and say, God is talking to me about you, and he wants you to know that he loves you no matter what you're going through. Yeah. Text or call me immediately. Yeah. And what I did is I texted my brother because I've really been believing for him to be saved. Uh, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and then I texted him, uh, and I haven't texted him in months, uh, so I didn't expect him to respond. Uh, but immediately, in the midst of service, uh, my brother called me back uh, right away, and I said, hold on, bro, I'm in service. He said, call me back the moment that you're free. Hallelujah. So then I ran out the north door. Uh, and I called him and I said I said hey bro and then he said listen you said God is talking to you I have nothing to say you talk to me and I said my great God hallelujah so then after that hallelujah uh, I just repeated what the man of God said uh, and I said God said uh, that he cares about you uh, and that whatever you're going through uh, he loves you hallelujah uh, and then for the first time uh, in two years uh, he let me pray for him and he let me Declare the word of the Lord over him. But that's not it. 
That's not it. Hallelujah. I prayed and I declared the word of the Lord. And I, sometimes, as you can tell, I get a little excited when I pray. So I said, uh, excuse me if I started shouting. And he said, no, you're fine. That's the power of God. I said, what do you know about the power of God? And he said, that's the power of God. And then I said, well, I'm not going to finish here, brother. Can you, can you just repeat? Can you just repeat this prayer after Come on. I'm with one of my friends. I said, I don't care about your little friend. He can say the prayer too. And then the friend was like, all right. I don't know what's wrong with your brother, but I'm going to listen to him. Hey, hey, come on, come Jesus. On. And he said, he said, okay, we're both going to do it. And after two years, after two years of praying, and fasting uh, and lifting up my plate uh, get out of the unsoil, uh, and declaring the word of the Lord uh, I said repeat this uh, say Jesus, uh, Jesus come into my heart uh, forgive me of my sins uh, and wash me clean and wash me clean and then word for word uh, he repeated it uh, and after two years uh, of praying and sowing uh, I can declare uh, that my brother uh, received the Lord uh, yeah. as it put so Hallelujah! the harp where God is always moving our relationships with him are not cold they are not stale they are not religious you are with a group of people today who have an
not the right number. It's not the right number. Now that's the right number. Thank you very much. A patty cake over nearly 200 souls this week. In America, it takes 100 churches one year and $100,000 to win one soul. And it's, it's every week. Where, where are we this year so far? Just over halfway. Where are we this year? 7,706. Pastor Jimmy, who's already had to leave, Pastor Jimmy, who's already had to leave with uh, a couple of the Dollar Christian College students who are on their way back to campus this week. Thank God. HPS begins to open up this week. Record enrollment. Show me my HPS picture. M Diana Yoder and Elder Mike Yoder sent me this picture. I sent it, I gave it to you this morning, guys. Thank you. That's not the picture. Okay, we'll get it. I'm not nervous. I got to praise, I got to praise, and I got to get it out. I got to praise. Come on, say I, I got to praise, I got to praise, and I got to get it out. I got to praise. Bless the media crew as well. Go ahead. Just. So, Miss Diana sent me this picture. I believe it was Friday or Saturday. Uh, Friday. She just happened to walk upstairs. Those are the Harvest Preparatory School offices there. And uh, that's, that's the main area where high school students go back and forth. That's the library, I guess. No, that's the offices. Library is on the other side. State-of-the-art library, I might add. Uh, Post-secondary classes there, I might add. Honors courses there, I might add. There are the high school teachers gathering together and praying over every student that's coming through there when they get here. I want to see how many men, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's one over there, nine out of 12 men. Men. Now that means something to me. That means something to me. So let's thank our HPS administration as well as our human resources department that understand a vision that includes men leading young men. Anyway, I just thought that was amazing. Thank you for that, Miss Diana. Also, what? School. They were doing the same thing. Yeah. Stairs. So. Yeah. I just, I just, I just found that really impressive. That there are that many men. Yes. And believe me, 
they can make a whole lot more money down the road at Pickerington or Reynoldsburg. These are people that sacrifice to raise up a righteous seed of remnant believers. And we love them. We love them. Audrey's daddy's up there. I, I just I, I just shouted all over the all over the conference room this week, realizing that you had accepted that position. And uh, we're so glad to have you. And you have your masters, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Just let you know. Uh, oh, excuse me. Your daughter is bragging on you. She says you have two masters. Teaching at HPS High School. And congratulations to beautiful Audrey and wonderful Storano on exchanging their vows and becoming one in the Lord. We are so, so proud of you. But you only get this Sunday off. That's all you get. Back to work. Amen. But I have to tell you this about Pastor Jimmy. He's on his way to Cleveland to another penitentiary there. Last week, last week, he won 52 souls in another prison. Wait, wait. And the warden bowed on his knees and accepted Jesus. That's what we do. That's what we do here. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got up here to tell you about Wednesday night. Man, don't miss it. Honest to goodness, you are just robbing yourself of such an encouragement right in the middle of your week. And you will, you will not recognize yourself after the very first one. So really, you know, Christianity in America was founded on three services a week. Every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, which was evangelism night in most churches, and then a midweek, usually Wednesday, sometimes Thursday. And everybody went to church three times a week. And uh, services were longer. And, and I believe that just like fathers not being in homes has contributed to the down, downfall of America, so has fewer, shorter church services. I really do. The Sunday school movement brought revival to America. The Sunday school movement, not something else. The Sunday school movement, because people cared that their children be raised in a world where God was above everything else. And uh, personally, I just think there's a lot to be gained by a return to the discarded values of the past. Uh, I, I think the church was at its best when it was least like the world. When moms and dads raised their children in church, when in, even in public school, we had prayer every morning and we pledged allegiance to the flag that our nation's brightest and best shed their blood to keep free. Yeah. I just believe that. But Wednesday night, <clears throat> the prophetic word of the Lord fell in here like, like a mighty blanket. And God spoke to us about our phones to get on our phones and to make sure that everybody knew that we were in church and that God was speaking and that we loved whoever was in that phone. 
And we had a lady testify who had been reunited with her daughter who she had not seen and been estranged from for over two years. And <clears throat> Bishop Amos, who is in Alabama preaching this morning at a great City Harvest Network church, <clears throat> they prayed together. And within days, the daughter contacted her and they got back together. And I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, this is a time of family restoration, reconciliation. And I believe it's happening. So I got this picture from, yeah, this is Gordon Lutz, who is a wonderful member here, helps, gives more toys away at Christmas time than our whole ministry and a wonderful part of our church. And he sent me this because this is the first time after that service in 25 years they have been together. 25 years. Don't tell me God doesn't move in here. Don't tell me God doesn't hear our prayers. Don't tell me that we're not having a revival. Don't tell me that God's prophetic right now, up to date, on time word is not in this house. So could we together just thank him? Come on, if he did it for them, he'll do it for you. He'll do it for you at home. Type in there what you're believing for. Do it now. We wanna agree with you. Oh, thank you. I don't know that it helps, but I'll try it. Praise God, thank you. All right, you may be seated. And uh, if these two Valor Christian College students can get through the announcements without preaching, we will, we will let you know what's going on at the heart. You gonna do all right? Yes, sir. I think we got it from here. You think? I think I so. I think we got it from here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, good morning, World Harvest Church. Come on, let's give God one big shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Well, we are so glad and it is our absolute joy to have you all here this morning. And if you're tuning in online, we want to welcome you again to World Harvest Church. My name is Leanne Alasco. What? I am a sophomore here at Valor Christian College, the School of Revival. Come on, World Changers. Yes, and I am a music ministry student here from Toronto, Canada. Yeah. yeah. My name is Robert Thomas. I am a senior, a fourth year here in my bachelor's degree, praise God. Yeah. And I am a pastoral leadership student and I am here from Bermuda. Amen. And we just want to take a good minute to just celebrate with every single person that got baptized this yeah. morning. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, and hey, we want to especially congratulate and celebrate and just praise God for every single kid and young child that got baptized this morning. Come on, pastor has been having this burden and it's been passed down to us that this next generation shall be saved, that Amen. this next generation shall be on fire for God. Right. And I know that this morning they got baptized and that they are on the right track, right. that we should train up children in the way that they should go and that they will not depart for it. So let's just praise God for those kids this morning. Yes, amen. Amen. We also want to celebrate everyone. If it's your first time here or first time in a while, welcome to the Harv. Actually, scratch that. Welcome home. Welcome to the place you belong. Right. We love you. We welcome you. We're a little bit crazy, but we all love crazy, don't we? Amen. Welcome. Just a little and bit. Just a little bit. Just, just a little bit. bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> so we welcome you, and we want to connect with you in two special ways. The yes. first way is if you reach out in front and grab that Connect card, you can fill that out and drop it in the offering container as it goes by during service. Yes, and the second way to connect with us today is on your way out. There are many booths by the 
exits that say new here and pretty balloons. There will be beautiful Dream Team members there ready to welcome you and to connect yes. with you and talk with you. Uh, Robert, uh, where are you going? <laughs> We're doing announcements. Uh, I have to get my suitcase real quick. Suitcase? Where are you going, Robert? My suitcase. It's for this week. Th this week? Yeah, you know what's going on this week. This week. Thursday. You are absolutely right. Yeah. World Changers, give it up because this week is Valor Christian College's Moving Madness! so excited. We are literally sitting at the edges of our seats. We right. are so excited to welcome all our new world changers. If you're tuning in online, we are so ready to have you. We yes, are so we are. ready to welcome you. If you're sitting in the tab, we can't wait for you to move in. And hey, listen, it is not too late for you to sign right. up for this semester, fall semester at Valor Christian College. Right. Go to valorcollege.edu to sign up. And hey, there are so many different scholarship opportunities. Yes. And it is not too late for God to move on your behalf. Amen. He, give him one day. Give him two days. Right. He can do it. He God do has. It. Yes, you can. Pastor has been declaring suddenly miracles there over this year, over 2023. So this is your year of suddenly, the, suddenly miracles, and we declare that over you today. Amen. Amen. Listen, we're expecting all of you to be here and to get here and to get our scholarships. All yes. you have to do is go to valacollege.edu, and we'll make sure that you get signed up and plugged in. Yes. And Amen. listen. We know that we have just been loving, pouring into this next generation. Right. Oh, but sorry, wait. Mm -hmm. I'm a little curious. Before I get into the next thing, Robert, what's in your suitcase? Well, since you asked, let's look in here. Huh? Oh, gosh. My suit's a little tight. Okay, so he's opening the suitcase now, guys. <laughs> All oh. right, I got this in here. A Dream Team shirt! Yeah! Dream Team members, make some Make some noise, Dream Team! Because next week we have Dream Team Rally. Who's excited? Awesome. We want you all here, a part of our team next Sunday. And like our pastor says, make sure you're in uniform. Right. So go ahead to the East Foyer after service yes. and grab a Dream Team shirt for a discounted price. And then also do not come alone. We're right. a team and we're building and expanding our team. So make sure you bring somebody with you and get them a shirt too, because it's yes. a discounted price for you to get one and for you to get one for someone else. Amen. Yes. And listen, Dream Team members, you guys are all so special to us, but the kids and the next generation are also so important to us here at the Harv. And last Wednesday, we started a new program called Nerf Wars. And I know I look a little young, but can I sign up, Robert? I don't think you can sign up, Leanne. Oh, but okay. all of your children can sign up, all of your young yes. people. We have amazing Nerf challenges. Unfortunately, I had to get shot in the back last week by Shaden to announce it. But it's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. Every week, we have new team challenges. Right. We have solo missions. We have trade, uh, uh, pin trading. We have so many exciting things happening every single week. And then on the last week, we have a final huge battle that will be happening so we want your children to come to have fun and also to be in the atmosphere where they can learn more about God and listen we're not just talking about kids but we also have pre-k classes and nursery right. classes available so we want everyone to come your entire family to join us on Wednesday nights amen amen awesome pastor Grace you got some more announcements for us yes sir don't we love our Valor Christian College students yes well, it is our privilege on this platform to get to lead you all into worship every Wednesday night and Sunday morning, but it doesn't have to stop when the service ends. Here's how. You can go out to our Harvest Music Live merch table in the East Foyer and check out our music. We've got several projects for you available there in addition to some wonderful merch, some t-shirts, a wonderful hoodie to get ready for fall season coming up. So make sure you take advantage of that as well as all of our church merch out there that is on sale. So be sure that you take advantage of that. And all these announcements that they talked about, it's a lot because we got a lot going on here at the Harv. Don't worry about it. You can find it at whc.life. All these announcements and more at whc.life. All right. Well, I say it like this. We are the friendliest church in town, and we're going to give you two minutes and show you just what I said. So please, if you would stand 
Find somebody that you don't know and greet them this Sunday morning. We're going to put two minutes on the clock. Here we go. Hallelujah. Wow, Robert. We are only so short into this service, and yet heaven is already in this room, yes, and the power of God has just been moving. But listen, you are not left out if you are tuning online. Jesus died not just so that we could go to heaven, but that we could have heaven here on earth, and right heaven now. is meeting you wherever yes, you are watching from. So stay liking, stay commenting, stay sharing. Share with every single person you know. Yes, make sure you're sharing, and don't forget to put your email in the comments so yes. you can receive today's free digital download. Yes. It is missing. This is Joan Lee Parsley's message from the gospel according to princesses and superheroes. Do not miss your opportunity to hear the word of the Lord from this consecrated, anointed vessel, the woman of God we get to know and love, Mrs. Joan Lee Parsley. Yes, and listen, we have just been having such a strong burden for kids and this next generation. So we're going to take a moment to just pray over this next generation. Yes. And so God, we thank you, Father, for thank this you, next generation of young, mighty women and men of God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that the enemy no longer, the kids do not belong to the enemy, yes. but I thank you that they belong to you. I thank you that this next generation shall be on fire. Yes. I thank you, Father, for the souls that are entering into your kingdom right now, Father. I thank you, Lord, for Robert's brother, who has been saved, who has declared Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And I thank, thank you, God, Lord. that you can do it for every single thank person you, watching online thank right you. now. Yes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen, stir yourselves up this morning because miracles are here. Heaven is here. And we're right. believing heaven for you. There's someone in the chat named David who needs prayer. So we just declare the power of God yes. touching David right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And he will continue to touch you yes, and everyone as we go back into today's service. So get ready. this morning that Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Matthew 25 and uh, it's a little bit long but it's it's pretty familiar to most folks but I I, I just want to emphasize it this morning, Matthew 25, and I'll begin at verse 32. Before him, meaning God, will be gathered all nations, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. Notice the distinction, sheep, goats. He will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left hand. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, the sheep, come, you blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Verse 4. So it's the foundation of the world. Verse 35. For I was hungry and you gave me food. Now, these are the folks on the right hand. These are the folks that on this monumental, momentous day will be on his right hand. These are they that will inherit a kingdom. We used to sing an old song, working on a building. God's been working on that place from the creation of man. And he says, I've been getting it ready 
for the folks on my right hand. Well, how were they distinguished? Were they distinguished because they went to World Harvest Church? No. He tells you right here how they were distinguished. They were distinguished because he was hungry and you fed him. He was thirsty and you gave him drink. He was a stranger and you took him in. Naked and you clothed him. Sick and you visited him. In, in, is sick and you visited him. In prison and you came to him. And the righteous will say, well, when we do that? And then Jesus answers and says, as much as you have done it for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you have done it for me. You know, the Bible's a literal book. The Bible's a literal book. People sometimes ask me, you know, if you see somebody with a little sign beside the road, what do you do? Well, I find the biggest bill I have and I give it to them. And you say, but, well, they might go buy drugs with it. Or they might do thus and so with it. None of that is my responsibility. My responsibility is to treat them, husbands and your wives, the way Christ would treat them. You mean Jesus would give money to people to buy drugs? What about your health plan? If there's anything that's a stench under the nostrils of God, it's religious people. Religious people. Religious people are not Jesus people. They don't respond like Jesus, don't think like Jesus, don't behave like Jesus. They believe, they behave like Pharisees and Sadducees, who were the very people that Jesus railed about the most. So, I believe that especially in the evangelical church, that's folks like us, especially in the evangelical church, we are like the rich man at whose gate Lazarus lays begging and we walk right past on our way to our shout, right? I'm not being condemning, I'm just pointing out an issue. I've been doing it for 47 years. I, I just think, now then there are those on the other hand that are simply social justice warriors. Social justice warriors, for them, I must remind you that Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. You, you can't do enough government reform or religious activity for poverty to disappear from the earth. That will happen in the millennium. It won't happen before Jesus said so. Does that make sense? Because you cannot bless what God has cursed. I'm going real slow. So there's social justice, there's religious bigotry, and in between there's the gospel. If you ask questions like, well, you know, if we're going to give to people with corrupt governments and that the majority of the people that live there are non-Christians and in fact are of another complete faith, so then what shall we do 
with Jesus at the judgment seat looking at us and saying right or left based on how you and I respond to the world around us that is suffering. Ellie Weissel, who survived the Holocaust and then won the Nobel Peace Prize, said these words, I refused to ever be silent wherever and whenever human persons are suffering. If you see suffering, run toward it. Run toward it. Meet that need. And this morning, I am declaring a Bridge of Hope Sunday. Bridge of Hope is our missions arm of all of our ministries. And right now, I have been flooded, literally flooded with reports, not only from Ukraine, where we are busy working right now, not from Central and South America, where we are taking millions of pounds of food right now. Not from Pakistan, where we raised up 50 churches. Not, but, but from that corner of the world where myself and some of you have refused to ignore what is going on simply because it's half a world away. Half a world away in the Horn of Africa, which includes South Sudan, which is the youngest nation on earth, and it is young because you and I played a vital part in getting a North Sudan and a South Sudan separated from each other as they needed to be because the North was constantly invading the South, burning their churches with the congregants and pastors alive on the inside Think of that. I mean, I don't mean to be overly graphic, you know, but just suppose men with guns came rushing in here right now and locked every door and held the pastor and his family right out there in front by all those flags at gunpoint and with everybody locked inside, women, children, men, set the place ablaze and made the pastor and his family watch and listen. It's, it, you know, we often say, you know, it's rough outside, America's getting, let, let me explain something to you. you. You need to watch a little bit of what's going on in the world because Jesus called us, you and me, to reach a world. Yes. A world. Brother Sumrall called me. Brother Sumrall called me to his hotel room. Miss Joni was with us. And I told her, I said, I, my knees are smiting one against the other because uh, I, I, you ever get called to the principal's office? Raise your hand. Yeah, God help the liars. <laughs> Almost everybody has been called to the... I'll tell you a little story. I never one time got paddled in school. Now this in a day where you got paddled for chewing gum. For chewing gum. Yep. For talking back. For not having your homework assignments in. 
And I made it. I mean, I know there's a God. I made it through my senior year. I never one time got paddled. Now, my sister, she got paddled once a week. And I'd like for real. A lot of times it was beating up some bunch of boys that was bullying me. Bullying back then didn't get you paddled. I, I'm not for bullying, but we sure produced a lot tougher generation that way. We didn't produce a bunch of snowflakes. Afraid of work, afraid of discipline, afraid of correction, and always have to have their own way. It was a whole different generation. I made it. Man, I, I felt good, you know. Because like when I was in school, the teachers were very creative, right? And principals, you didn't want to hear about. You saw them coming, you went to the other side of the hall. That's just the way it was. And if you didn't, your parents would deal with you when you got home. God, give us parents. I was so impressed yesterday. We had uh, the, the homegoing celebration for one of the greatest men I ever knew. It worked in this church tirelessly as a volunteer and on our staff. His name was Billy Judan. Y'all listen. His name was Billy Judan. His wife had seen us on TV, right? And they lived in the capital of Trinidad and Tobago. And if you want to see a beautiful place, Trinidad, just, it's a paradise. They had three little children, Shane, Brittany, Becky. And Mary Ann and, I know, I'm just, and Billy, would bring those children, dressed to the nines. I remember that we used to have a donut shop right out here in what is now Dream Team Central. And all the little kids, including mine, would run out there and get donuts every Sunday morning. And I would always run into Mary Ann and Billy and the three kids out there getting donuts. They came here because Marianne had seen us on TBN, Winning Souls. And Billy was named Billy because his father was born again in a Billy Graham crusade. So they named him Billy. And Billy was one of those people that you didn't have to ask them if they were a Christian. Because it just emanated from them everything about them their work ethic their smile their joy i don't ever remember an encounter with billy that i didn't laugh he was just that kind of person you know and they helped us build this place literally and verifiably and i thought Brittany, the eldest daughter, did a eulogy, if you will, talking about her daddy. They had built an incredible business in Trinidad. Very wealthy, very successful. And when Mary Ann said, I want to go to Dominion Camp Meeting in Columbus, Ohio, Billy gave her that gift as a wedding or a birthday present, brought her to Columbus from Trinidad. They went back 
They sat their family down while they were here. They learned about Valor Christian College. Billy wanted to go. While they were here, they learned about Harvest Preparatory School. He said, that's where our children need to be. They packed everything up and were living in what hotel down here? Econo Lodge, y'all, in Elkhart. Econo Lodge. That's where they were living. They had a beautiful, very expensive three-story home in the capital of Trinidad, looking at the ocean every... Well, I didn't know. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't realize that. That's Billy. And, and he moved his family here. He put their things in storage. He hired somebody to run the business there. And he, I'm talking to somebody today. This, this is not by accident. And they were down here in the Econo Lodge. I'm talking about homes. I'm talking about family. I'm talking about church. I'm talking about school. I'm talking about community. Koinonia community and right down the road there I don't know if it's still there or not uh, at the it's something else now but at the Econo Lodge you know the picture Econo Lodge right it's not the Beverly Hilton it's the Econo Lodge on Bryce Road in Columbus Ohio but nothing mattered to Billy like his God and his family. My great Jesus, what a better country this would be. If, what a better church it would be. If we had families that cared about God and their family more than anything and everything else. My wife is a she is a kitten. She is a godly, and I don't mean that in a silly, religious way. She is as rock solid as a Christian, any person I know. And we were talking about families. Families. Now, I don't want you to get on some guilt trip today because, you know, the divorce demon has visited your life or your children are not right now serving God like you wish they would. I don't want you on a guilt trip. I'm talking about what we should be striving for. And in that Econo Lodge, for, for those of you that are new around here and think the apex of all Christian endeavor must become to place the jewel of a soul in the crown of our Savior is something new, you, you couldn't be further from the truth. Don't tell anybody, I am a free will Baptist. I don't know that they would still own me. And that's okay. I still love them exactly the same. I've been a soul winner since I was eight years old. Door to door. It's in my DNA. I got it from my father. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. I don't know when anything so gripped my heart because it took, what I'm going to tell you took me back to my father asking my mother to clear the coffee table 
and calling the four of us, myself, my sister, my father, my mother, three of which are now in heaven. And he would clear the coffee table and have us sit on each side of the coffee table and join hands together. And I'll never forget how he opened every single prayer. God, this is my family. He didn't depend on the church to do it, although there was never a service we were not in. We could be in Little League as long as they didn't have practice on Wednesday night, Sunday morning, or Sunday night. It's amazing, you know, nowadays, well, this one's at soccer practice on Sunday, and this one's got cheerleading, and that one's got gymnastics, and this one's got volleyball. And that's where we got to be. We can't be... We couldn't miss church for that. Now we miss church for everything and anything. And regardless of the way they're acting towards you, you know what you're saying to your children? Church is important unless. Unless. Church is always. Had we're born again, none of my father's side work except my dad. And our relatives always lived, all lived in Southern Ohio or Northern Kentucky, Northeastern Kentucky, and Southeastern Kentucky. And so the, it was just close enough for them to all take a Sunday drive and show up at our house about four in the afternoon on Sunday. And my mother and my father would entertain them and then say, why don't y'all go to church with you? Oh, we didn't bring any clothes. Back then, clothes was a big hindrance right. to going to church, right? Now, just, I don't care if you're wearing a polo outfit, come to church. You are welcome. Amen. Amen. I don't wear a suit because I think it's some protocol I have to follow. I wear a suit because I have to have this microphone stuck on the necktie. And it just doesn't seem to look right with cargo shorts. Just say it. This doesn't look right with cargo shorts no matter what. I mean, that, Elder Canfield put his sunglasses on. That's pretty bright. But my, my mother and father would say, all right, y'all. The food's in here. The restrooms are there. We'll see you when we get back from church. You mean they left their guests? No. They went to be with their father. Do you understand what a different world that is from where people live today? Can you imagine what would happen around us if all of us would say, no, we don't do Little League on Sunday. That's the Lord's Day. We might get it back till things like that weren't on Sunday because they didn't have enough people show up to do it. You don't look at me like I've got four heads. I lived in a world where nothing was open on Sunday. You had to get your gasoline on Saturday and wait to get your bread and milk for Monday because wasn't nothing open. Nothing. It wasn't let's get to church so we can get to. You're getting to all week long. Can we carve out two hours on Sunday? I got my back a little out of whack couple weeks ago and so I went for a treatment so they're working on my back and they said uh, what are you thinking about right now and I said well I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry because I got this 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 and they just walked away from me they said it won't be, do us one bit of good for me to do this if you're somewhere else 
You need to be right here and you need to forget everything else. And when I was driving into church today, the Holy Ghost said to me, why don't you just give them a therapy session and tell them, stop thinking about anything else. Stop thinking about what you got to do today. Stop thinking about what you do Monday. Stop thinking, because God wants to give you a treatment. He wants to relieve your stress. He wants to lift your burden. He wants to heal your body. He wants to give you peace in your mind. For two hours, let's get a therapy from heaven. Sometimes it's too much, and I'm as guilty as him, it, it's, it's too much about warfare, and it's too much about my praise as a weapon. And how about my praise brings the presence of God and he washes over my soul and he restores the Lord becomes my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through that mess out there the valley of the shadow of death in here i will fear no evil for you are with me you are here your rod and your staff your correction and your comfort they comfort me oh jesus comfort us Thou prepares the table before me in here. I can sit down and eat, man. The enemy's at the gates, but he ain't in here. I wish somebody just get happy and understand what I'm saying. Say the enemy is the gates. The enemy's at the gates. The enemy's at the gates, but we're inside the gates and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Woo! Down there at the Econo Lodge, you can call this the Econo Lodge, That wealthy, successful young man and his young family left everything they had, left everything they'd ever known in pursuit of God. Just in pursuit of God. Down there at the Econo Lodge, Billy, Billy made an altar at one of the two beds in the room where there were five of them. And he said, children, now sit down here. I don't know how old they were. They weren't very old. And, but they were old enough to remember it. And he sat him down and he said, I'm not gonna be your father and allow anybody else to lead you to Jesus. I'm your dad. And he went through each one of them. And he told them what salvation was and why they needed it. That Jesus was the Savior, that they were sinners, that heaven and hell were both real, and God loved them so much that he let them choose. And he went through all three of them. Do you understand, Becky? Brittany, do you understand? Shane, do you understand? Yes, Dad. All right. I'm going to pray. Brittany, you want to pray? Yes, Daddy. Becky, do you want to pray? 
Yes, Daddy. Shane, you want to pray? Yes, Daddy. And they prayed right there in the Econo Lodge. Enrolled them in Harvest Preparatory School where all three of them graduated from. And I thought, sitting there looking out on this beautiful campus, that God caused people like that and many of you to help us build here for his glory. And I prayed, God, give us more dads like that. Give us more dads like that. More homes like that. And you moms that their father isn't in the picture doing something else, then that falls on you. And give me just one moment to speak to, well, I'll do it this way. I'll speak to Storano in, in proxy for every other young man who's gotten married to a young lady whose daddy, like hers, raised her to know God. Don't you ever tamper with that. If he saw to it she was in church, you see to it that she and her children are in church. This is our legacy. This is our legacy. Don't you take a girl that's been raised in church and get her busy doing something else on Sunday. Don't you let that man's grandchildren not find their place on Sunday morning in the church in the kingdom of God. Let's build our families back. Let's start where we are. Let's just start where we are, right? No condemnation. Let's just start where we are. Stop staying home from church and letting your children see it. Well, they understand, you know, they were raised in the church. They know how it is. Well, that's not how it should be. your place is here from 10 to noon, then your place is here from 10 to noon. Period. Period. This, this is where we, this is our lifeblood, right? This is where we're plugged in. This is where we're connected. We got too much separation from the family and the church and too much separation from the family and the presence of God as a unit. Most of you, your children are not in here with you now. In my day, there was something called Sunday school. And that's where everybody was trained in the things of God in discipleship. And then everybody came together for church. That changed in the 90s to children's ministry and adult ministry. And uh, so we're going to be working on that coming up. And, and children should be in children's ministry when children's ministry is going on. Right? And then we must afford other opportunities for families to worship together as well. Amen? Thank you. Just... I'm just giving you a good therapy session. Everybody take a deep breath. And when you blow it out, shout, blessed be the name of God.
Amen. You may be seated. So here we are with the world around us in desperate need. I'm not talking about a little bit of need. Our team brought me back this in the last month from South Sudan. South Sudan, you remember, you let me go to Congress over and over and over and over and meet with people like Sam Brownback and many, many others to put pressure on Secretary of State at the time, Colin Powell, to declare genocide in Sudan. We pushed for something, and when I say pushed, I mean lots of blood, sweat, and tears from my life, from my family, from our leadership here, to allow me to be there to push and push and push for something called the Sudan Peace Act, which got passed, and then it got declared as genocide, which opened the way for South Sudan to become its own nation because they were just being destroyed and decimated by the North. Well, this 27-year-old mom of four in South Sudan, and I hear people saying, well, you know, if they're in such a desperate situation, why, why aren't they, you know, why are they having four kids? Number one, they don't believe in abortion. Their background is Muslim. Hello. We just lost on a bill in Ohio that would have paved the way to greatly enshrine anti-abortion laws in the state of Ohio. But Christians didn't show up. While I'm on this little soapbox, let me tell you, if you didn't vote, don't you ever complain. Don't you talk about abortion. Don't you talk about anything that has to do with legislation. Because you, you don't even assume your right and your responsibility to vote. If Christians would have shown up, that thing would have passed in a landslide. Instead, it got defeated by two-thirds to pave the way to keep abortion legal in the state of Ohio. Vote. Register. It matters. So now it will be on the ballot in November. If you're not registered, get registered to vote things in the four years. Get, get, get them in here. Register to vote. I won't tell you what to vote for, but I will tell you to register and vote. Vote. People want to cry about illegal immigration and, you know, they're just bringing in votes. Well, Yours would cancel one out if you went. I don't understand being a citizen and not voting. And I don't know if we have a civics class in, in Valor Christian College, but I promise you we will. Americans are great complainers. They don't even know how their government works or how it's supposed to work. Someone's being hijacked, they don't recognize it. <laughs> they don't even know how it's supposed to work. They took civics out of high schools in the 1980s. That's how you can do man on the street. Maybe we do one here sometime. No, we won't. 
and they'll take a microphone and say, uh, what was the Civil War about? They don't know. Who's the Vice President of the United States? They don't know. Who's the Speaker of the House? They don't know. What is the Speaker of the House? They don't know. What's the difference between the Senate and the United States House? They don't know. How many are in each house? They don't know. Is America a democracy? They don't know. For those of you that don't know, it is not a democracy. It's a democratic republic, which is government of, by, and for the people. It is not a majority rules. There's something called the Supreme Court. How long do you serve on the Supreme Court? How long do you serve in the United States House of Representatives? How long do you serve in the United States Senate? Go home today and ask your children. If you don't know, Google it before you get there and they'll think you're really smart. There's something called the Electoral College. How can somebody get more votes overall than somebody else and not win the presidency? Because it's not a democracy. It's a democratic republic. Otherwise, New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago would elect every national office because there's more people there. It, it's just a therapy class this morning, right? So there we are, this rich man. If you have more than one pair of shoes, you have a pillow and a bed, and you have food in a refrigerator somewhere, you are in the top 80% of the wealthiest people on earth on earth, right? So America really is, we're, we're worse than that rich man with the hurting, the poor, the suffering around us. Because we're not using our tax dollars to help that. We are financing our enemies to buy weapons to kill our citizens defending our freedom. We are negotiating with hostage holders. Okay, you got three of ours, we'll give you three of yours for three. What? Where did this come from? In South Sudan right now, there's a precious woman. I don't want you to think about the numbers. It's 129 million starving to death right now in South Sudan that we help make a nation. Another 22 million starving. 150 million people. Six failed rainy seasons in a row. Russia invading Ukraine and cutting off the grain supply to South Sudan. And there lives a 27-year-old mother of four. Our missionaries led her to Jesus in January. She converted from Muslim to Christian in January. At which time her husband chained her to a tree and had the authorities label her as mad, insane, because she prayed to Jesus. She's now held in some kind of psychiatric unit in South Sudan 
All of her family who continue in the Muslim faith have signed for her to stay there and they have decided that she is insane because she prays to Jesus. Her four children are starving. They have nothing. So today, I want to thank God for some of the more fortunate members of our family across America for establishing and giving a $50,000 seed to challenge us to match it. So in other words, today, your fifty. Your $48 gift will double. Double. It will be matched immediately, dollar for dollar. And help us feed 16 starving children. $96 will help us feed 32 children. And $400, 130. So I hope you'll keep that in mind. As right now, we ask for your morning tithes and offerings, not only here in the tabernacle, but all of our branch campuses, all of you watching online, the information is right there. So I want us to sow a missionary gift today for America. I want us to sow that God will strengthen our families, even in this church that God will strengthen our resolve as Christians to stand up in a culture that's lost its mind and we're the only beacon of light to bring it home. Father, in Jesus' name today, let this be an outpouring of love for those who are suffering. 200, 150 million people right now who are verifiably going to die if we don't get to them but i believe we can and i believe we will we've been doing it for nearly three decades now and i want to continue please help our people to be of a willing heart in the day of their visitation how good you've been to us jesus how good you are to us we're not worried about where our next meal is coming from. We're not worried about where we're going to sleep tonight or if we're going to have anything to drink tonight. We're not worried that military forces are going to storm into the church. Let us show our gratitude by helping those who are living right now, today, at this moment, in that horrid reality. And we'll give you the praise for it, Jesus, because you have never failed us yet. You have delivered, you do deliver, and we trust that you will yet deliver. Bind our wounds, heal our hurts, settled, troubled, and weary hearts, Stabilize minds driven astray. Center us on you and on your kingdom. And we'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, this therapy didn't cost you anything. I think the going rate's about $150 an hour. So I think God's word can help and so be generous today and help us, help us. We're taking 150,000 meals already committed to, already on the ships on the way there. And when they get there, somebody's going to say, pay up, Parsley. And I'm going to say, no problem. The people of God are generous. Amen. So don't just give what you normally give. So an extra $48, so an extra $20, so an extra $10, and help us accomplish this great goal for the suffering people of God in South Sudan and around the world. Amen? You believe that's God's work? 
Amen. All right. Ushers, you may wait upon the people. Those of you online, make yourself available to all the information there. Praise God. Praise God. While they're doing that, I'll go ahead and share this with you. I, I had removed it, but since they're passing the offering containers, I might as well talk. Amen. So, coming up, coming up on Sunday nights, beginning September 10. So, can I have my phone? If you've already given your seed or if you're giving your seed by phone, then I'm interrupting you a little bit. Well, thank you. Brian Ferris just sent me a text. Thank you for sharing as a father to all of us today. The world needs real fathers like never before. Thank you for that, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, so what I want to do is I want you to put this on your phone. So get you a post-it note, put it on your phone. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Get a post-it note, put it on your phone. There's a commercial where a lady does that. She said, I'm going to make a note of that. It makes a note on a post-it and sticks it to her phone. And there are about 10 of them on there. And then her daughter looks over at one of them and says, pick up dad at the airport. Ah, missed that one. Anyway, get these dates on your phone. Set an alarm. Beginning September 10. You say, this is a way out. I want you to get it on your calendar. September 10, Sunday nights through October 1st. Four nights. We're doing a completely new faith and family schedule and uh, everybody that i've had the opportunity to talk to about is really excited about it can you th those are the dates sunday six to seven beginning september 10th running for four sunday nights four sunday nights these are the instructors elder bill canfield pastor john carlos and professor sean sams and then i get to wind the thing up so here's how it's going to work Everybody, no, we're not going to be selecting classes because there are always two or three classes you all want to pick from. And, and we, get, we end up with four different groups of people learning four different things. And so we, we want to try this. I think you'll love it. So for three weeks, Elder Canfield will be teaching on Jesus in eternity past. If you begin in that class, the next week you would go to Pastor John Carlos's class, which is Jesus 33 years on earth. Then the third week you would move over to, to Professor Sean Sam's class, Jesus in eternity future, cause it's all about the person of Jesus. If you started in Pastor John Carlos's class, the next week, you would go to Pastor Sam's class, uh, uh, Professor Sam's, and the next week, you'd be in Elder Canfield. Hey, do not go stay right anywhere. Here. Stay here because we want you to fill yourself up this week with a powerful yes. life-altering message from Mrs. Joni Parsley. Just put yes. your email in the comments and get the free digital download of her message from the gospel according to princesses and superheroes. Make sure you download that as soon as possible, it will bless you. Yes, and this service has completely blessed me. We Amen. praise God for a pastor that teaches us, that has a burden for souls. And this is a message, this is a live service that you want to go ahead and share yeah. with everybody that you know that needs this message in their lives. And hey, if you missed the announcements today, we have all the announcements up online at whc.life. Yes, and we cannot wait to see you back.
But if you did not get an opportunity to give, we want to make sure that you do that now. All the offering information should be available yes. on your screen. Make sure you go and you sow and you give your money as unto the Lord. And we will see you back on Wednesday night. Listen, I got my miracle from a Wednesday night. So Ooh. make sure you're tuned in for Wednesday night for your sudden miracle as well. We'll see you at 7 p.m. online. See you there. Sowing into the kingdom of God has never been easier or more secure than with smart giving. Any smartphone will work to use your smart giving, open your text messaging app, and send a message to number 45777. In the message of your text, type the amount of your gift, space WHC. If it's your first time giving, you'll receive a secure link to set up your account. Select your home campus, enter your giving method, and where you would like to receive your instant giving receipt. If you already registered, the process is the same. Just send a text message to 45777. Type the amount of your gift, space WHC. You'll receive your receipt immediately. If you prefer, you can also sew online at whc.life or by phone or mail. Just call the number on your screen or send your gift to the address displayed.
Could love compel the heart of God to send grace down to me? Lost in sin, a wretched soul, desperate to be free. Oh, precious one, God's holy son, grace went to Calvary. Ah, grace, ah, grace, powerful grace, grace that restores and rescues me. Grace, powerful grace, I sing the song of the reed. 